major selection criteria for osimertinib is um, uh, acquired resistance defined by the T790M molecular change. And of course, you can't detect that molecular change uh, unless you test for it. Plasma testing is a rapidly evolving uh, alternative to tissue-based testing. It is not perfect. If you get a test result that is positive, you can use it. Um, in contrast, if you get a negative result, particularly if you don't see the original EGFR sensitizing mutation on that plasma testing, you need to do uh, repeat biopsying. The tests are available now. There are multiple commercially available liquid-based testing platforms that can be used. None have specific FDA approval for testing for T790M at the time of acquired resistance. The closest thing that we have is Roche's Cobas assay does, has, does have FDA approval for upfront EGFR testing and is capable of finding T790M. That and multiple other commercial platforms are available. My practice as an NCCN basically agree, although I, I think I'm much more passionate about a theme that they uh, just endorse as one option. In my clinical practice, I am very passionate that whether you're talking about EGFR or another actionable molecular change, that you always use targeted therapy as long as you possibly can. It is more convenient for the patient, it is less toxic for the patient, and generally in every situation under which we have hard data, it tends to work better than chemotherapy for the patient. And so in my practice, um, at the time of diagnosis, patient gets a first generation um, TKI. Uh, they get that for as long as they can. And so I may do some treatment past progression. I may do some radiation to spots of isolated progression. But I treat until I think I can't use that first gen TKI any longer. And at that point, I obtain repeat molecular testing looking for T790M. If I don't find it, the patient gets a cytotoxic doublet. If I do find it, the patient gets osimertinib. In the case of osimertinib, I treat as long as I can on osimertinib, and I'm comfortable extrapolating the principles that we've learned from first-line EGFR treatment and from other targeted therapies to say that I will sometimes use osimertinib past progression, and I will sometimes use radiation to help me get there. At whatever point I decide, that osimertinib is no longer the right option for the patient, that they need something different. At that point, I will then write the patient for cytotoxic therapy. Although when new clinical trials evolve to treat some of these resistance mechanisms to osimertinib, that's when I'll start introducing yet another repeat biopsy into my practice. One important point may be worth making about the answer that I've just given, which is that I have not mentioned immunotherapy. I do consider an immunotherapy an option for the EGFR mutated lung cancer patient, but I don't consider it an early line option. We have some data out there suggesting that the efficacy of these agents may be a little bit less for patients who've never smoked and for EGFR mutated populations, granted very heavily overlapping populations. And so I don't throw out the drugs. I will consider them for later line therapy, but I'm first going to use up the EGFR access as much as I can, including experimental options. And in my practice, time will tell if this is right, but in my practice, I'm moving to a, a cytotoxic doublet before considering immunotherapy.